<laughs> Hi everybody, Ta -da! welcome to my live. If you've seen any of my lives before, you know, these will take forever. So if you're watching this on the replay, you feel free to skip ahead. Um, <clears throat> eventually you'll get to the red lip part if that's all you're concerned about. So just, it's okay. I just want to let you guys know that if you want to support me, if you learned something new, if you are excited, about these lives, if you just had fun, whatever, watching, please support me as a content creator by um, sending me a coffee by using the coffee link below in my description box. That really supports me so, so much. Um, another way to support me uh, is liking my video and subscribing to my channel and sharing me with your friends because I don't want to make up a secret. So I'm going to get started by putting on some moisturizer because, yes. Moisturizer is good while well, everyone starts to come in here. I'm on a couple minutes early. So I'm using Bobbi Brown's face base because I really do like, oh, this is a lot. This is like, I'm lathering it. That's okay, because my face is a little bit dry. I'm lathering the stuff on. And as you can see, yes, I cut my hair. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone is not having meltdowns like I am <laughs> during this whole stay at home phase that we're going through right now, this coronavirus moment. This is a moment in history for us. Um, so if you are into bullet journaling, this is a this is like a a thing that eventually historians will look at and go, what was everyone's emotional perspective and what was X Y Z? You know. So um, those of you who have bullet journals, journal away. If you have scrapbooks, scrapbook away. If you have live vlogs, everything, talk about it. Let this be a moment. We are a part of history now. <laughs> so turning something into a little bit of a positive, like, hey, at least we were we were there and this is what we felt like. I had a meltdown and chopped off all my hair. Um, mainly because I was kind of getting tired of the shaved head look because I'm trying to grow out my hair. And I didn't really know how I was gonna go about um, doing this. So I missed my bangs. I wanted my bangs back and then I told the hairdresser yesterday I said just chop it chop it off you ever seen drop dead Fred so now this is my hair and when I get out of this coronavirus um, quarantine my hair will be down to here which is exactly where I want it and then I will have a really cute haircut for days to come but my hair is still shaved underneath she cut that shorter, which I wasn't really happy about. I'm like, fuck, why'd you cut this part? I'm trying to grow it out. But my head is still shaved all around my head. But now with this new haircut, you can't really tell. This Velma Kelly hairstyle. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll do it here. All right, so let's get started. So I'm gonna do um, some foundation on first. Um, we'll do Beauty Blender and I'm going to use um, 320 for the shade. What time is it? Is it time? Yeah, okay. 11 one. We're gonna get started. People or not people, or no people. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to pull from the bottle because the bottle is now like fairly empty and I try to scrape as much as I can out of it. Poor bottle. This look shouldn't take too long um, because really, especially if you have bangs, the focus is the lips for a look like this. You don't really need to put too much makeup on your forehead either too if you have bangs because it's gonna hide it anyway. No sense in wasting the product. But I do add a little bit of foundation and stuff up there just so that the blend is pretty even, especially if you're using a color that's not exactly your skin tone shade. So let's just press some of this bad boy in. And if you're here in the room, please comment below, say hello. Don't be shy, you can Definitely ask me makeup related questions. I guess any kind of questions. This is sort of a get ready with me. Why not? Feel free to chit chat away. Because I see you. I see you in here. Okay, so I'm going to do another layer. With a red lip look, I do like my skin to look a bit more polished. Um, that's just my own personal preference. You don't have to have all this makeup on when wearing a red lipstick. Um, I know plenty of people who just wear red lipstick only. You know, they don't even bother 
with base stuff. So red lipstick will actually bring out a lot of color in your face. Like if you're feeling a bit drab and you need something to look like it pops, you know, you want to look like you threw on a lot, but you really didn't, red lipstick is the perfect thing to, uh, to do. Now with picking the right red, uh, there comes a lot of fact, not a lot of factors. Basically, I like to consider it like two factors. How bright do you want it to be and what undertone do you want? You know, that'll play into what color you're going to buy. Hi. How often do you wash your brushes? I use my fingers to apply foundation because I find brushes make me break out more. Um, you should wash them. Technically, you should wash them after every use. Technically. Realistically, are we doing that? No. For our own personal brushes? No. My, my kit is a whole different story. But if we're talking about personal use, I will actually shampoo these bad boys at the end of the week. Um, if it starts to get a little gunky, if I'm using different types of foundation, like thicker creams and stuff, it's, if it's thicker, I wash it right away because the gunk is not what you want on your face. And it harbors bacteria that way. The minute you use it, the first time you use it, and if there's bacteria on your face, it's gonna have bacteria, you're gonna use it again, you end up contaminating your foundation, you end up contaminating your products, you're putting it back on your face. So if you want the honest answer, you should wash them all the time after every use. Um, but on my own face, nothing really happens. I wash them once a week just to be on the safe side. Um, and we have time. It does not take long. If you only have a couple of brushes to wash, you know, it doesn't take that long getting a good brush shampoo. The shampoo that I prefer using is by London Brush Company, but there are so many shampoo brands out there for your brushes. So you shampoo them and you lay them flat to dry. I usually have like a little um, a dish rack that I bought from the Japanese dollar store, Daiso. It's like a little cute rack and I just have them laying on there so the, water, so the air can just right through. It's nice. But yeah, if your brushes are making you break out, that's a possibility. They need to be cleaned all the time. This is not a one and done deal situation, unfortunately for some. <laughs> Okay, so let's do, let's give myself a little pop actually. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter with my concealer. So I'm gonna use something super pale. Let's do buff. This is really light. So with something like this, I'm just gonna keep this in the center of my face. What happened? Oh crap, you know what I did? Hold please. I did a, makeup challenge on periscope with some of my friends and we did a no make uh you have to do your makeup with your eyes closed and i didn't realize that i used this particular concealer on top of green eyeshadow so now there's green <laughs> all over this i have to clean that let's go for a different shade shall we Porcelain. These porcelain's a better shade for me. Anyway, buff is really, really light. Buff is like unforgiving white. At least porcelain can be blended in a little bit better with my skin tone shade. So brightness. <laughs> and I like to buff that in. What is going on with this song? Mm -hmm. Do a little bit more. Really enjoy just sort of like pressing it into the foundation. And if you know someone who would probably benefit from this live feed, or just someone who likes makeup or whatever, invite them in. Share this with them. There you go. 
little bit here. A little bit of redness, so I'm gonna try to cancel that out. Can't really see it on camera, but in real life, a little red. So, ever so slightly. Okay, and then to etch out a little bit right here, because I'm gonna plan, I plan on adding a bit of bronzer. Throw on some color, but then buff that into the skin by pressing right in. So it is a nice little blend. There we go. I hope everyone is having a good time staying indoors. I encourage you to be as creative as you possibly can when you're inside your own place. Um, it's a little hard, I know. Like a lot of us are going crazy. I know I did with my haircut. Um, a lot of us are kind of losing it, <laughs> but this is all for the better. We're doing this for the people. People who cannot fight this virus for themselves, we need to help them. So I hope everyone is staying indoors right now so that this thing can be over with immediately. <laughs> I need to go back to work. So I did a little bit of a light powder underneath my eyes and now I'm gonna go in with a uh, darker foundation as my bronzer. I love to use this. This is G4. This is the shade um, G4 by Cosette Cosmetics. Uh, Rocky Cosette is a dear friend and I love his infinite makeup stick. So I use this as my bronzer a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to use this guy. The same little dude. I'm going to add some stick to your brush and then Get it all up in there. And start creating some definition on your face. You haven't left my house since Sunday. Woof! You painted your kitchen and living room. Changing my home decor. I'll be broke by the time this gets up. Oh, how fun! That's awesome. Good for you. That's gonna be great once you're done. Are you excited? Do you, what, did, what color did you paint your kitchen? What was it before and what color did you paint it now? That's super fun. Redoing the home. I'm in Los Angeles, so the lockdown is in effect. We're not really calling it a lockdown. I, I, I get it. Because <laughs> LA people are no joke. We don't want to call it lockdowns because, you know, I don't want, what is it, 40 million people here <laughs> in California? You'll be rioting and shit. But we're all told to stay indoors now. So uh, I'm still hearing people outside kind of like, I'm like, get back inside. <laughs> Before both rooms were a light tan color, okay? Kitchen is a light mint green color and living room is a light gray. Oh, in Massachusetts, yes. We're in the cusp on a lockdown. Yeah, I think we should just do it like nationwide. We just need it. Everyone just stay home for two weeks. That way this shit can be eradicated and then we can get back to normal. Please, just stay at home, <laughs> please. I'm gonna do, even though I just said you don't have to put makeup up here, I'm gonna do a little bit just so that in case my bangs sort of like peek through, show a little bit of that skin. You see a bit of darkness. Dip it a little bit, a little too much. Oops. Oh, my bad. I'm gonna try to blend that out. Thank God my bangs will hide this because this transition is not cute. There we go. You can kind of see where it stops and where it starts, you know? That's not what you want. You need it to be completely blended out. Uh, sure. So right now, my hair still needs to be trained. It keeps separating in this little spot because it's not used to bangs anymore. Come on, hair. There we go. Just don't touch them. Hi. Hi, Lisa. So a little here. Just to get some of that color. Bring it down. My neck is extremely pale. 
Thank you. Um, I had her go a bit shorter than what I was originally intending because I figured, you know, if we're going to be in lockdown for about a month, then I don't want to have the hairstyle that I really want in the beginning of it and then come out of the lockdown with like, I got to get a haircut again, you know? So I had her chop off where I really want my hair is to be like right here. <laughs> Thank you. I want it to be like right here. Um, but I was like, you know what? Cut it because my hair grows so fast. So yeah, she cut it. She chopped off my hair and then I regretted it. And I was like, oh no, it's too short. It's too, too short. But then it's fine. I, then I remember, you know what? No, I will probably change the color. Yes. Um, this I'll probably just dye back to green just so it's not this ugly wheat color. I uh, just so because I have some green color left over. So I'll probably do that. But I'm thinking about just letting my hair, this is all natural. So I'm letting my hair go and I'm probably just going to level it out a bit. Once it goes down to like here, I'll probably go in and dye my hair black, but have levels of dark brown, a softer black and dark brown, and maybe a lighter brown, just so there's dimension in there. I want to, I want to go dark, 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 but then have like different levels, because I'm feeling that vibe. I, I appreciate color for what it is, but I'm slowly kind of going, okay, let's go dark for a minute. <laughs> My hairdresser may not do it though. She, she will not black <laughs> because I'm typically pretty wishy-washy when it comes to my hair color. I'm like, I want this today. And she's like, yeah, I'm not ever dyeing your hair black. <laughs> well, that's not it. So we'll see. We'll see if she'll let me. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use a bronzer just to add in some deeper color like this and the reason why like I wanted my hair cut anyway is just to hide that shaved head thing like I said earlier in my in my live but nobody was in here when I said it um I I wanted this haircut because I'm over it I'm over how my hair was growing and how my shaved parts of my head were slowly trying to get there and just I, I was having a hard time flipping my hair to one side and then I was starting to see my hair thinning just in this spot because I kept flipping my hair in one direction and I'm like okay I can't I can't do this I was having a little bit of a meltdown and uh, I said fuck it let's just chop it let's make it look like my hair isn't shaved at all so I chopped it and this is what it looks like but my head is still shaved underneath she cut this part off, which I'm not really excited about. I'm like, oh, fuck, if you're gonna chop it, at least thin it out so it at least falls flatter to my head. But hey, you know, to each their own. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's fine. So now it looks like I have a normal hairstyle, normal haircut versus the punk rock thing that I had before. But it was so funny, I was talking to my mom. My mom was with me. She was the one who convinced me to do it. <laughs> I'm not, well, kinda, because somebody had referred this lady and the lady was very very cheap and I was like oh god am I really gonna trust this anyway I was like who does this hairstyle remind you of and then she's like oh, I don't know I go have you seen drop dead Fred when she just and my mom just pff, laughed her <laughs> so she's like oh my god I don't like this I get it drop dead Fred <laughs> so that made it fun um Let's do, let's do a quick eye look. Um, now, red lipstick. Depending on, I know, I love that movie. So this is like the mega beast. <laughs> um, your red lipstick plays a role in your entire makeup look. Um, if you are using warm tone browns, then you wanna pick a warm tone lipstick if you want the makeup to look very cohesive, if you want it to look sort of effortless, you know, classic, stick with the same undertone. There are a lot of reds out there that have bluish undertones, so they kind of air on like the pinky side, the purpley side of red, you know, like 
the brighter reds have a little well no because there's a lot of orangey reds too that are very bright so the reds that have more of a that pinky undertone when you swipe it on your hands and you like really blend it in it looks kind of pinky that's like a bluish undertone that's like a cool undertone so when you're using <clears throat> excuse me pinky eyeshadows or we're using cool tone browns air on the cool side because that will look more classic if you are using the warm tones you want to do the orangey reds the brick reds the deep auburn reds those type of reds are going to look classic with the warm tone browns on your eyes so i personally because i have a lot of gold on my skin i stick with the gold the warm tones because on me i feel like that looks more effortless it's not to say that i can't wear the pinky reds you know of course i can anybody can it's just that that right there is more about personality and confidence in wearing a red you know if i wanted to wear a bluish red i wear cool tone eyeshadows and just pop that red and go yeah but that's not what i want i'm gonna stick with something more warm because i feel like that best suits my undertone if you are pale and you have like pinky undertones to your skin or if you're dark and you have pinky undertones to your skin a cooler red would look more flawless on you that would be less of a challenge to deal with but if you chose a warm red that's gonna be your confident color so anyone can literally wear any red it's just trying to find that undertone balance and that best fits with your skin you know and the best way to find out is is to um is to kind of see like how your skin looks with specific colors of like golds you know like do you do you look best with gold jewelry or silver jewelry warm or cool you know so that's how you can kind of gauge it. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to do just a quick little sum sum. So I'm gonna take, I have this palette that's my personal palette here. And these are some, these are some eyeshadows from Melt Cosmetics. So I'm just gonna throw on whatever on my eyes. Because with a look like this, I'm trying to go simple and classic, you know? Nothing, not trying to create a look per se. I'm just trying to have a little bit of warmth just so that my face looks put together and clean. I, I like a clean makeup look for everyday use. If you're going to use a red every day, I would just say keep it clean everywhere else because that red is going to be the star. I'm not trying to say that you can't wear colors on your, you can do whatever the hell you want, but I say it's best just to keep it neutral and keep it clean and go simple on the eyes. I'm definitely gonna do a wing liner because for the red lipstick, <laughs> yes liner, yes lashes, of course, why not? Let those eyes pop in their own way. <laughs> Heavy mascara, oh my God, yeah, absolutely. It's just one eyeshadow. I didn't put a primer. I didn't put a base eyeshadow. Didn't even put a highlight. I just took a medium brown and I just slapped it right in the dead center of my crease with a big old brush. And you can see how it now created the shadow a little bit. Then feel free to ask questions too as I continue on. I'm going to take a fluffy brush. And I'm going to go into a darker brown. I should be very careful. These eyeshadows fall out like crazy. Because they're pressed pigments, I believe. Melt is a pressed pigment kind of a company. Those pressed pigments, man. They can't be trusted sometimes. I'm going to blow this up because that's dark. Did not mean to go that dark. There we go. And in the event that you do go dark, you can always make it lighter by using a lighter shade on top of it. Or by buffing it out with a big ass brush like I did, and it softens it up a bit. But at least there's a little bit of definition. Now I'm not sure why, it might be the deodorant that I'm using, but I feel like I smell like a baby. 
You know that newborn baby smell? Or is it this shirt? I've been smelling it since last night. <laughs> and this, I did sleep in this shirt. But I, I don't know if it's just the quarantine. <laughs> or if it's me. But I feel like I smell like a little infant. And it's driving me kind of insane. In a not good way. I just took a shower this morning and I put on the same shirt I had on last night. Yes, I did. I'm a slob. But I'm just like, mm. Thank you. Oh, Lottie, hi. I did a thing. Indeed. I, I told you, I needed my bangs. I miss my bangs so much. <laughs> but I did a thing and I, I needed to do the thing. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, this is... What I did, I had her, I had her do it like super duper short. I wanted it like right here originally, like right at my chin. But I was like, you know what? No, if we're, if I'm gonna be quarantining for like a month, I want to come out of it looking how I want it to look. <laughs> Mel's doing the challenge at noon. Oh shit! Okay, I better hurry. Oh, I better hurry. With I might be a little bit late then, because I, I I won't be done with this in time. Okay. So oh, I'm so excited. Yes, that's awesome. Um. Okay. So. Just a little bit of color, two colors, that's all you need. You don't need to go nuts. Um, put the eyeshadows away. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so now I'm going to throw on a little bit of blushy blush. Again, staying within the warm tone family because I do love my warms. Um, I'm gonna use Terracotta by NYX. It's my favorite blush of all time, I guess, because I just love this shade so much. And I feel like I feel very blushy when I use this shade. There we go. Just to add some killer on my face. And then we're gonna go into, I'm still gonna do my brows, but it is a great trick in case, in case during quarantine, if you have bangs and you wanna get your brows done, this is the perfect opportunity to grow all of your brows out to get them redone when the quarantine has been lifted. You just hide it with your bangs, let all the brows grow out. Then when quarantine is over, you can go to get your brows done and then voila, perfection and nobody will know. <laughs> and that pretty much goes for like any situation. You know, if you have bangs, it hides all of your secrets. Okay, where is my... I might just have to use one of these things then. I wanted to do it. What the hell is it? I wanted an angle brush for my eyeliner, but I can't find an angle brush. And I hate you. Wait. Oh, um, Kat Von D. This brush always is weird. Let's, let's play. This is way too thick. That's not going to work. You or you. The littlest one will probably be best. Okay, so let's get into liquid, some gel, actually, sorry. I said I was gonna do brows, but I'm actually jumping to my eyeliner all of a sudden. Okay, Kiko liner. This motherfucker is dry. So, I like to use my special ingredient to make this alive again. I like to use a bit of the Inglot Duraline this shit, oh my god, is amazing. So this guy is dry, it doesn't work. Maybe a little bit, but it's it doesn't pick up on my brush. So what Inglot Duraline does is it re-wets the product. One drop is all you need in here. And then this immediately makes it super wet all over again. And you get your gel back, and it's super fun. And you're like, yay! I don't have to like throw away the product and that works with any sort of gel liner and I freaking love it but beware the Inglot gel the Duraline is very hard to get off you need a really good like makeup remover before you go to wash your face <laughs> okay it's it's on there <laughs> Just letting you know that. And you probably will have to use Inglot on this like forever more because it's just never the same once it dries down. You have to con continuously use it, which is fine because it works just fine. But yeah, about that. 
There we go. Do a little bit of this. Because I do love my black wing liners. It's really until recently I started only doing um, tight lighting. <laughs> I just started to become lazy. But I'm glad because you know, I'm open to doing other colors on my face nowadays. Because before I was like, nope, you were only going to get a black wing liner from me. I think it was like a self-conscious thing. I don't know. The wing liner was my, was my go-to. It was my, my comfort zone, if you will. You can make the wing pretty intense if you want to. If you're trying to go to work though, I don't recommend doing a very intense wing liner because uh, your boss may be like, calm down Amy Winehouse, calm down. You don't need to go to the extreme. Basically your liner probably shouldn't touch your eyebrows if you like to kind of put it into perspective. And because I'm putting on lashes, I'm not too worried about getting the symmetry with all this um, for this like actual liner part, only because when I put lashes on, I have to redo this anyway. So I just throw something on just so I can see it. The only reason I started to wear makeup was because I saw a girl with wing liner back in 2008 and thought it was so beautiful. Aww, that's good though. That's fun. Whatever reason you have is totally valid. Let me just get further up in here. It is really pretty too. I'm gonna get up in here because sometimes this brush doesn't get close enough. I don't get close enough. There you go. Get your standard wing, long, wing on. I perfect everything towards the end. I don't know how I started doing makeup that way, but I just all of a sudden did. I was like, I'll throw on everything and then I go in and detail. I don't know why I do that, but I do. So let's do brows. Um, brow pencil. They don't make these anymore. The formula for MAC is different. So I just rely, I send everyone to Senna. Senna brow pencils are the best, but I'm going to finish up this MAC pencil and then yeah. I'm like trying to rush through this so that I can get to the red. <laughs> Lottie, are you still in here? You didn't tell Mel about how our eyes feel afterward, right? <laughs> I'm curious to know if, uh, who went live yesterday? I'm curious to know if her eyes started hurting too. So we did this challenge and it's fun. I recommend if you guys, even if you're not makeup people, start a Google party, you know, like a Google watch party and invite your friends your girlfriends, get the girls together via internet, you know, grab some wine or whatever, and then do your makeup with your eyes closed. <laughs> That's a fun thing to do during our downtime. And I, re I recommend that. Just a little insider tip though, your eyes might hurt afterward because you don't realize how, how delicate you are with your eyes, with, the, with your eyes open. <laughs> When your eyes are closed, oh my God. But it is so much fun to do that. So in case you need some sort of something to do, call up your girlfriends and get on Skype, get on Google Party, get on Periscope, 
and uh, do that. It's super fun. A great time killer. Okay. Go back to this side. smell that baby smell it's so weird I don't like it I got this new deodorant scent I wonder if it's that it's got to be that I got this new deodorant smell it's um by Sh Sh Schmidt Schmidt I think that's the name of the company and it's like sage and something no not the sage one it's like a newer scent I don't think how it's I don't think I, I liked how it smelled at the store and I was like, oh, this smells so pretty. I love it. And then I bought it, and I don't think I, I don't think I like the way it's working with my biology here. I just feel like, ugh, ugh yonk. <laughs> I don't like babies. Yeah, it's true. Okay, so oh, look, I might need the liner. Shit. Okay, so let's curl the lashes. this heavy my bangs. I feel whole when I see them. Okay. Throw on some mascara. I'm actually gonna pick up a smaller mirror because I really want to get into my lashes and looking down for me is the best way to really get a good application. It also helps prevent me from getting mascara on my eyelid by looking down into a mirror. So that's why I like doing it this way. I mean, it's not foolproof though. I still get mascara on my eyelid sometimes. It's really freaking annoying. In which case, Q-tips will be your best friend. <laughs> you don't have to wear lashes with this look either. I'm just going to do it because I prefer false lashes with a good red lip. I think it looks so beautiful. Put on mascara first before you put on your false eyelashes because it helps it marry together quite nicely. Um, where is my studio effects? Where'd it go? I know I have a new, another one. One second. Um, there we go. Ardell Wispies. Ardell Wispies is where it's at for me. Um, I normally use the Studio Effects line by Ardell. I think the Studio Effects, uh, that those type of lashes are just gorgeous. So that's what I stick with for the most part. But I still use regular, you know, Wispies and stuff. Trim off one little cluster because it's a little too much for my eyes and use some Dark Duo. Dark Duo is, is pretty awesome when you're using black eyeliner because it doesn't show up as much as the Clear Duo does. So you don't have to worry too much about covering up that blue lash line. And I'm gonna start sniffling because this is the point I notice I stopped breathing 
when I do my makeup. And I, this happens to me. I don't know why I stop breathing. And I even do that when I'm doing makeup on a client. I will just hold my breath. <laughs> no specific reason. I, I don't, I think it started from doing makeup because I didn't want to breathe on people. And then it causes my nose to run. So I apologize for the sniffle sniffle that you're gonna witness in this whole process. I, I think I just started doing this. But every time I do my makeup, I hold my breath and I don't, I don't realize that I'm doing it until I get reminded, breathe. <laughs> I know it sounds so weird, but it's true. Okay, so we're gonna let this settle. And we're gonna go back to the original one, or the first one. I lightly blow on my personal lashes. Don't do this on a client, because that's gross. <laughs> We just want that glue to get a little bit tacky. Why my music stop? Then, you know what? How about this? How about I just solve the problem right now? Start with the outer corner first, and then work your lash on. Is that mascara on my eyelid? It sure is. See? So you start with the corner, kind of like merge it down a little bit. Take my pinky and I sort of press it into my lash line. Remove some of that excess glue that gets on your fingers. I sort of just pinch my normal lashes with the falsies. Lift. Blink a couple times, sort of jumble them around with each other. And that is how you get falsies on. There we go. And then when you do the black liner, you won't see the crazy transition as much. Um, it's sort of camouflage it, the, the thicker the uh, liner that you use. What is this? Oh. Let's get that out of the way. So when it comes to your lips, when you go to do it, you want to take your time if you've never done it before. Liner is absolutely key. Lip liner, if you are using a traditional lip stick tube. Um, because, and it also depends on the lipstick formula. A very shiny lipstick that is very soft has a greater chance of, of um, feathering out onto your skin. Some of you call it bleeding onto the skin. So a pencil is going to help prevent that as much as possible. It's going to just keep the lipstick all in place. So um, just keeping that in mind, the lip liner personally should match the lipstick because when it comes to red lips i feel like when you have a darker uh, lip liner sometimes that can look a little dated it can look a little showy you know like if you're on stage yes you can use a darker lip liner because that'll be just fine you have lights on you anyway but in real life you don't need to have a dark lip liner with a red lip that's kind of 80s and 90s um, you can if you want to. It's not horrible, but it's just not. If you want something to look sort of effortless and clean, stick with the lip liner that matches the lipstick, you know. So let me just do a little bit more. 
eyeliner real quick before we get into that. And also you want to keep a concealer handy in case you mess up. Concealer is going to help you clean up the line around your lips as well. I'm going to use a very pointy brush for this. So I'm going to take this again, stop and look at yourself, you know, when it comes to liner, also take your time. A lot of people try to zip through it because they just want to get it done. And that's how mistakes happen. Take your time. Makeup can smell your fear. So take your time. <laughs> okay. Let me just... Uh, move it to this side this time. You gotta even out your bangs. Boom. She said, calm down, Amy Winehouse. Proceeds to do a very thick black liner. <laughs> oh, yes. I feel like my eyes are open this way. <laughs> Fun. Okay. This is done before I start looking up like crazy. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. Gotta make sure it's also dry before you start looking around like an idiot. I'm dumb. Okay, good. Okay. Red lips. Um, liner. Start with the liner first. I'm going to be using a NARS lip liner. Is this the one I want? Or do I have this still? Please tell me this is still. Yes! They don't even make this anymore. This is extremely old, but I have to use it because I just love this liner so much. Oh, do I even have the other red? Hang on. Let me try to be fair. Beet. No, beet is too pink. Oh, I don't have brick. I have, a, I have so many lip liners here in front of me. Do I have the color that I actually want? What will I? Let me just take it out though because sometimes the ones that I use a lot are really, really short and then I don't see them and then I'm like, I did have it this whole time. This is this is an orange red. We don't want that. That's too bright. Please tell me your brick. Nope. Bummer. Bummer. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Please be brick. Please be brick. <gasps> Beat. Fuck! <laughs> Brick lip liner is the one I want to use because it's a nice deep red. That's fine. I have red and rich, which is very similar to brick. The reason why I wanted to use brick is because it's a pencil form, and I wanted to show you guys that it has to be absolutely sharpened. Um, I could try this NARS one, but this NARS one... I guess we'll see once I start using it. I feel like this is... 
not orangey enough. All right, let's pick out the right red, too. I'm gonna utilize my back of my hand to make sure I'm using the color red that I want. Um, this is what I have currently in the display for this live stream, but looking at it, I'm like, no, this is too bright. I want something that's like too bright. I want something, I want a good, a good deep-ish red. So if you don't mind, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna attempt to look for one. Um, that looks like it matches. I need something that has more of like a richness to it. And that's the current situation that I'm in is trying to find that rich. So like if I had I like this, but it looks too dull. I need something that has a vibrancy to it, but also a dark shade. <laughs> That's why it takes me forever to find like that perfect red. I have so many red lipsticks. So that being said, I also want to tell you guys that when you're trying to find, oh, Selena, when you're trying to find, that's very pinky. You see how pinky that is compared to the other two? I hope you can tell. This has a lot of blue in it. This is more orangey, this is more orangey. That's too pinky. Um, when it comes to finding the perfect red, it's not gonna be easy. You know, it's not a one and done deal. You're gonna go through several reds before you find that right one. So don't feel, um, you know, inadequate or don't feel like you don't know what you're doing when you don't find the perfect one right away because I have a box full of reds right now <laughs> that I'm sifting through trying to find the red I'm looking for. And I feel as if I'm probably not gonna find it and for the sake of trying to hurry up and get through this damn thing, I may just have to just, well, pick one and push through. Chili? No, chili's too, ugh, it's too bricky. I don't think they have a red that I like. I do believe that my red does not exist. Oh God, no. This is a gorgeous color, by the way. This is too blue. But if you ever come across this shade by NYX, it's called Chaos. Oh, if you were a blue red kind of a girl, mm -hmm. this one's a really nice color, but it's just not the color that I'm looking for. What color was this? This was the Sephora number one shade. It's a four number one. Ooh. Oh, should I? It does have that, that richness in color. What do you guys think? Should I go for it? Should I go for the brighter one? Should I go for Sephora? Or should I go for this one? I feel like maybe the Sephora one just for the sake of showing you, this is liquid. I wanted to show you guys like a pencil and a, and a lip tube, the Sephora. You know, I wanted to show you that because obviously a liquid lipstick is gonna be easy to put on. I feel like, like a lipstick, oh, it's whatever, it is what it is. Okay, it's all about the details, it's fine. Let's do the Sephora one, just because I love the color of it. It's just so, it's vibrant. This one I would actually call this more of a neutral because it's even amount of, like it's close, in shade with this orangey shade, but it's also close to this pinky shade. It matches up, it aligns quite nicely with either or, so I call that a neutral red. And yes, there are neutral reds out there. So in case you're like, you can't tell if it's you know orangey or not, it's probably just a neutral. And that means you can wear whatever. It goes with anything. So let's put some of this away. Yeah. I'm sorry, I apologize. I have a habit of doing lives and I don't put my stuff away. And then I'm like, why is my place such a mess? Put it away. Oh, shit, I almost fell. Okay. Willing to bet that I know exactly where my brick lip liner is. It's in that little container right there, but I'm gonna continue on. 
So this here is NARS. This color is called Mariachi, okay? So your lip line should be as close to your natural lip shape as possible. The problem with my lips, and it's hard for me to, to demonstrate, um, because my, excuse me, my lip color, excuse me again, coffee, my lip color starts underneath the bridge of my lip. Um, if I can somewhat show you, there is a line just above my lip color. And if I don't use lip liner right at this weird little divot, not divot, it's like a crease, if you will, it looks weird. So I always have to draw it right on where the lip sort of like creases up. You see this white line? Like right there is this leveled moment. Anyway, but when I do it, it looks like I'm overdrawing my lips. So when I show you this, <laughs> that's why, that, that is my personal like, I wish my lips just, the color was right where it actually like bent up a little bit, you know? Anyway, I'm gonna continue on, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm probably really confusing the hell out of you, and I apologize. So, we're just going to follow the actual lip shape with a very sharp pencil, please. very lightly at first, okay? Just so you see it. See here? There's no color there, but that's where my lip is. I do avoid that, because if I were to draw the line right here where this lip line is, you can actually see it. If I put lip liner there and lipstick there, I look like my lips are gigantic and it looks fucking weird. So this is the only part that I actually do ignore because I don't like it. I've done it many times, I'm like, ew. So, I'm only going to line right where the color is. I'm ignoring this because ooh, it does not look cute. <laughs> See how there's a line right here? I ignore that. Okay, so now we got our basic shape. Now we're gonna go in and detail it and try to stay as slick as you can. If it gets all wonky, you can just sort of wipe it off with your finger real quick or go in with concealer afterwards to really sharpen it up. So, you see how there's a little bit of a divot? Is it? Can you see it? I think you can. Oh, thank you, Jan. This is for demonstration purposes of me taking this long. Does it actually take me this long to line my lips? No. I just go in there and I do it. Um, but I just want to show you guys that in the very beginning when you're getting used to doing red lipstick, this is the time you have to take to practice your shape and how you really like your lips to look. So you get in there. I like it, let's move forward. Come on. You're waiting for Melissa to do her eyes wide shut challenge? Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit late because obviously I'm on here, but, oh sorry, I, I got distracted and I just went, view. <laughs> Once you get used to it, you can just do it really quickly like I did. I'm so sorry. I'm about to take my time. Ugh. Jan distracted me. I apologize. <laughs> You're watching both? Oh. Okay. And don't worry about coloring in. 
You can color in if you want to. You're going to wear lipstick over it anyway, so it doesn't matter. Try to keep as straight as possible. Hmm? The minute your pencil starts to dull out a little bit, that's when the feathering starts to happen. That's when the line is no longer crisp and you want that crisp line. So you're going to have to sharpen it. I know this seems sharpened to you, but it is not. It is dull. So you have to get in there, sharpen again, so that that line becomes super duper crisp. Get a good sharpener. Like the MAC sharpeners, the NYX sharpeners are pretty good. The Senna sharpener is amazing. So just get in there and make sure it is sharp again. Otherwise that line is no longer crisp and you end up getting that weird feathery thing and it's like, oh, my lips look like shit. It's just, this is like the savior. This is the tool. Take your time, look at your lips in the mirror, do whatever you gotta do, just to see if it's even. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I like it, it's a nice little shape. Is it? Mm -hmm. It's symmetrical to my face. So, put this away. And then you go in with your um, lipstick, whether it's a, a tube or a liquid or whatever. You found red lip to be very hard when you first started. Yeah, it's it, this is it's a little it's a little tricky at the very beginning, um, but the more that you play around with it, the more that you sort of like sit here and line your lips, line your lips. It's gonna take some practice. You know, if you're not gonna get, you know, this perfect lined lip at the very beginning. When I first started, it took me. Dude, even nowadays, I line my lip fucked up sometimes. If I don't take my time, and if my sharpener isn't sharpened enough, I've done some funky, wonky lip things. Not cute. <laughs> so just know that it's not just you, it's, it's everybody. But the more you practice it and the more that you um, do this, you'll get better at it, I promise. Just take your time, just go slow in the very beginning. You know, don't rush through it. I don't like liquid lipsticks very much, but this color is so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. I love it so much. It's a little bright, actually. Hmm. I do love this color, but it's a little bright. A little bright. Then I can, you know what I can do? I'm going to layer. Because you can do that. So. Mm, such a pretty color, right? Oh, good God. Oh, I love it. But, how I slide? Yes! <laughs> so I'm going to take that dark... Oh, I put it away. And now I don't, I don't remember which one it was. I'm going to do a darker shade right on top of it, just so that... Oh, crap. Just so that you can see that you can mix your lipsticks. Maybe not so much a liquid and a, and a regular tube. outside you're supposed to be social distancing son of a I'm sorry guys I tried to get done as quickly as possible and then I think it was this one I think it was this one so let me do this close ass one 
Um, it looks like I scraped it. Well, I've already, I'm pretty sure I mixed. I'm going to just scrape it again just in case because you just never know. Pretty sure I'm just going to keep this for my damn self. Okay. I'm going to get a little brush for my lips because I don't want to use the tube itself. I don't know whether I'm going to remain, put this in my kit or not. Probably just gonna keep it for myself, but. That's better. Oh shit. Okay. I'm sure you can barely tell on camera, but in real life, there is a bit of a difference. Okay, you know what, fuck it. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna keep this. <laughs> when do my clients ever want a red lip? Oh, that's red. Ooh. Ooh. What color is this? This is Kosas Phoenix. And oh, I love that. I really do. Um, so let's say, for example, if you accidentally get it all over and you're like, oh, it's like it's not crisp enough and you need to clean it up around your lip area. Mm -hmm. This is what you do. Let me put this away. Phoenix, I should keep this up. Ooh. All right. So. You did the thing, you did what you're supposed to do, and now you're like, crap, I messed up, and crap, I gotta fix it. And then, you know, there's red lips on my on my skin. Take a concealer. The first thing is to not panic, because then you get flushed when you get panicked, and then there's redness everywhere. Keep it cool, keep it calm. It's just makeup, it can be removed. So, I like to take a concealer. Um, any concealer will work, honestly, as close to your skin color as possible, or you take your foundation to make it completely seamless, uh, which we could, we could do. Let me show you. Just take your, conce your concealer or foundation, something that's, that matches your skin, and you're gonna take a very flat brush, preferably one that has a crisp angle to it or a, flat ang a flatness to it. Let me just clean this off real quick because there's some black, and I want this particular brush. I'm using a MAC brush cleanser, which is an alcohol-based cleanser, which means after this, you're going to have to like shampoo your brush because alcohol can dry out the bristles and then therefore ruining your brush, but it's fine. There you go. So you're going to take your cut, your foundation, right? Maybe just dab it a little bit. And go in slightly away from the lipstick first so you can get the initial foundation down on your skin and then go in to kind of crease it out. Make sure there is no red on it. Get in there and blend it away. And then you have this crisp, sharp edge around your lip. Put on. So in case you ever feel like your liner did you dirty, just go with a bit of foundation and crisp it up yourself. Or if you don't have a liner, just crisp it up yourself using your foundation or a thicker concealer, like a like a cream concealer that comes in the pot, you know? 
Why does that question pop up so much? I don't understand. I'm like, oh, block immediately. Okay. I wipe it off on my hand a lot. Maybe a little bit too crispy in there. I made it too uh, too thin. There. <laughs> Ta -da. Does anyone have any questions at all? I know it's, you can do it all around your lips if you want to. Um, if you wanna make the Cupid's bow even more crisp, you can do that. Um, I'm not going to because I'm actually pretty satisfied with how this looks. So I want to go fucking it up. Uh, but yeah, that is how you do a red lip. It takes practice. I promise. But you will get it. And I have a ton of lipsticks. It took me, I, I mean, I mean, I couldn't even tell you how many lipsticks it took to find the ones that I really felt confident in. It's just trial and error, you know? It's just going, okay. A lot of it has, per it is personality, like, you know, can you sport this? Can you feel confident enough to, you know, bust it out? If you are not sure about busting in a red lip, do a darker one first. Don't do one that's this bright. Do one that's a little bit deeper, you know, because a deeper lip is a little bit more, um, I guess, like easier to wear, in my opinion. Uh, you could do something more natural, like doing like a, like a, a darker peach, tone or like a, a neutral tone that has a little bit of red in it just sort of like ease you into it like a chili kind of a color that way it's not like bright ass red but um take your time and if you and eventually you will get there because the more you feel confident in like the smallest little ways is the more you'll want to wear a red lip anyway guys i'm gonna get going because um i'm gonna go catch one of my friends lives <laughs> so unfortunately it's in a it's in a private group, so I can't can't really share it. But uh, yeah, I will be back tomorrow here on YouTube to do a look at 11 a.m. And hi, thanks for coming in. What happens when when your bangs so long you can't see? <laughs> you just have to like put put it in a clippy clip. You gotta like you gotta take one of these little things and just go and then bam, lipstick. <laughs> I gotta I gotta finish a TikTok. And then after I dog my dance, oh, and then make sure you also get rid of the, the makeup that's on your hair. That's the thing that we all tend to forget. I tend to forget. Then you can see your brows. <laughs> you can get a little bit of water. You can get a little bit of makeup remover. You can get a little bit of whatever. But, uh, ah, let's dry out my hair, shall we? <laughs> just, uh, let's, let's just remove some of that. Ah! Okay, I gotta finish the TikTok, which will take me like 2.5 seconds. There you go. Remove that makeup on your head because we don't we don't want that. Oh shit, like that. Holy cow. And then you should be good to go with your daily life. Oh, much better. Okay guys, I'm gonna get going. I said I'm gonna finish a TikTok. Who am I? Uh, I'll see you all later tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'm going to go live to do another look. So uh, I hope you guys love this this live. If you want to support me as a creator, please send me a coffee by clicking the coffee link that's in the description box below because that really helps me as a content creator. Um, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you tomorrow here at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Goodbye, everybody.